Let's do the breakfast and plus TV Africa. Uh, it's time where we go through the pages of the national dailies. We have Okunabo on Katare, who's on standby. He joins the conversation. Okunabo, it's a beautiful morning to you and uh, thank you for being part of the breakfast. Thank to you. Good morning. And good morning, Nigerians. All right, then. Well, let's start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. As always, we'll be paying attention, uh, you know, to the biggest stories on the leadership newspaper. Uh, the, the board caption here talks about how infighting disloyalty costs APC's defeat in Oshun. Wow. It's just a reminder of, uh, you know, thoughts that uh, happened with uh, the PDP. It feels like the PDP had a lot of issues, but they were able, uh, you know, to sort out the issues that they had uh, prior to this time. In fighting, does loyalty cause APC's defeat in Oshun? While jubilation in Oshogbo as a delicate family produced second governor in 30 years. Interesting. Another one says, we're still studying election outcome, says Governor Uyitola. Uh, that's uh, <laughs> the incumbent governor. Victory signals uh, signposts PDP's return to Vila. I take that again. The victory sign posts PDP's return to Vila. Article IU is quoted and civil society organization authenticates INEC result. Seek interagency collaboration. Democracy triumph over violence. Abdul Salame is quoted on that. I mean, this is quite interesting. Uh, writers underneath the board caption this morning. His Excellency, President Mohammed Buhari, unveils the NNPC meeting. Uh, you could see all of that glitz and, you know, the shining sun and more like an egg, whatever that is. Uh, the date would be the 19th of July, 2022. And uh, the venue is the Presidential Conference Center, Asorog Villa. Energy for today, energy for tomorrow. Let's see how this actually pans out. Uh, Muslim, Muslim tickets, nation building beyond religious sentiment. Pastor Tunde Bakri is quoted. And Kaduna train attack. Niger government six release of General Garba's wives and five children. That's it on the leadership. We'll move away from the leadership and quickly we have the punch in front of us. Uh, the punch. Face off with Arek Bashola Kos Oyetala, re-election minister's faction is quoted to say, we're assessing outcome of the poll, Oyetala, to talk after consultation, according to the aide. Buhari Atiku Saraki, governor's hail at Deleke, governor's, uh, governor-elect promises to perform. Oshun poll indicates Ige's voice resounds from the grave, says showing Ka. Uh, that's what he's showing, Ka. Tunubu Shatima, APC picked best winning combination, says Adamu. Marketers finally hiked petrol price to 170 naira to 190 naira per liter. Uh, you, you need to know that the original price was looking at 165 naira per liter. And ASU NLC plans national protests and please demand notification. Senate orders the NIMASA DG's arrest over $90 billion loss. Importers shun eastern ports over insecurity orders. This is what shippers are quoted to say. And just before we move away from the punch, monkeypox costs heat. Or I take that again. Monkeypox cases heat 101 highest in five years, and name Northern campaigner DG Baba Chair Panels tells Tunubu, Lagos businessman accuses police of extortion and petitions the IG. Another one talks about Buhari Songwo Ulu APC Mons Kami Nelson, a very uh, strong chieftain of the All Progressive Congress. Here in Niger State. 
Well, that's the much we can take on the punch. Away from the punch, we also have uh, another paper that's the nation. Adeleke PDP celebrates as Oyetola studies result. Interesting. But how do you explain the fact that, you know, the president had moved on to congratulate Adeleke and then you have a governor still trying to study the result? Uh, governor calls for CAM, Buhari outcome, Oshun people's will, uh, Abdul Salami panel, the cries vote buying. Labor plans two day protests over ASU strike. That's on 26th and 27th of July. And you have uh, the ex chief justice of Nigeria, 14 Supreme Court justices for a probe over corruption. Muslim Muslim ticket shouldn't be an issue, says Pastor Bakari, Tunde Bakari is quoted to say, and banks are just forex. Uh, sale policy as dollar scarcity persists. Dangote, Ovie, and Mefili orders uh, for Zenit Bank's seminar. And that's the much we can take this morning on the nation. And quickly, just before we have Okunabo uh, come in with his thoughts, we have a This Day newspaper. NLC vows to go ahead with nationwide protests over closure of universities. Now, the essence of this protest, according to the NLC, is that it would force the government to implement the agreement uh, the government had entered with the union uh, prior to this time in the previous years. Let's see how all of that's going to work. Will this yield any result? Will the government be moved by this protest? And even the fact that you also have the health workers saying they're threatening to embark on a strike. Underneath, uh, that's not underneath because that's a caption on its own. Uh, boldly, you have Buhari or Shun people have expressed their will through ballot. It must matter, be respected. And some people are studying, uh, you know, the result. Congratulates PDP Adelike on electoral victory. Reiterates commitment to credible electoral system. Atiku Ayu Saraki Devi Obasiki OB, others salute the winner, these riders. And uh, you find Kari, federal government, to continue to determine petrol prices despite NNP's transition to commercial entity. Uh, feels like we've taken this already. You also have a picture that was also on the leadership. His Excellency President Mohammed Buhari unveils the NNPC Limited. And uh, you have the president's picture, more like an egg shape, cracking and the sun shining, definitely on Nigeria. And this would happen on the 19th of July, uh, the presidential conference, Asso Rock Villa, Energy for Today and Energy for uh, Tomorrow. That's what you find. Okunabon Kataria joins us this morning as we go through uh, the papers. It's good to have you join us. Good morning. I don't know what's wrong with your com with your communication. I can hear you loud it's and clear. Breaking. Oh yes, I'm fine. It. Anyway, go ahead with your question. Good morning. Well, it would be on the network now, but let's uh, hope that we have a smooth conversation. Quickly, uh, this one on the leadership. It talks about how infighting and disloyalty cost APC's defeat in Oshu. That's how the leadership captions it. Do you think that this is the real situation, that the infighting, all of the uh, confusion that the APC might be going through was responsible for the defeat in Oshun State? Yes, well, in as much as the defeat could be polycausal, there could be other factors, such as um, maybe poor administration, um, what have you. But I strongly believe that the party is consumed in the very smoke it bells up. And that very smoke that probably could be referred to as the last straw that broke the canon uh, is the rift between the minister, Aregbe Shola, and the governor of the state. Don't forget that the minister has a large followership in that state. And um, you cannot wish away his cloud. And you know the fighting was so intense and the rivalry, I mean, so, it was so bitter that Arabe Shola was 
at a point working on how to remove the governor. And so I strongly believe that since that didn't work, this was seen as an opportunity, notwithstanding that Adelike was definitely going to be the beneficiary of this writ. It's an opportunity for him to withdraw his support for the governor and uh, by extension allow a delegate to win. That is one. Then secondly, to me, this is what I refer to as repristination of the delegate stolen mandate. In 2018, or thereabouts, it was quite obvious that a delegate won that election. And that mandate was stolen through the courts. Of course, at the court of uh, first instance, which was the tribunal, Adeleke won. But by the time it got to the Supreme Court, uh, that judgment was upturned. And victory was given to uh, what is the, the governor of the state. But obviously, even if you looked at the margin, it was just about 400. And that will tell you that the most popular of the two of them is obviously a delegate. And especially with the support of his niece, David O. So, I mean, it didn't come as a surprise with lots of political pundits that a delegate was definitely going to get a student mandate in 2018. So, to political pundits, it didn't come. And let me also at this point comment. INEC for their transparency, for their credibility. And at this at, at the, in that election, the givers walked. I also want to commend the people of Osho who are canonical out to right from the pre election, the, during the election, and after the election. Of course, we have hiccups here. There are unfounded allegations of gunshots on that particular day of the election. But even the uh, uh, election monitoring groups and the civil society groups all attested to the fact that the elections were relatively, or let me say 90% uh, history in, in terms of the beavers, in terms of the conduct, of the election and the conduct of the electorate. All right, but um, let's also delve into other issues uh, dominating the papers, uh, different papers this morning. We've seen that on the punch. Uh, we've also seen that on some of the papers. It talks about uh, the incumbent governor studying, you know, the results. And we also know that uh, a peace pact was signed uh, where he himself was also very present and really don't understand what does what that really means uh, saying that he's studying you know the outcome of that particular result uh, one would expect that the governor would have as well gone ahead to put out that call I mean there's usually a call to make but or a message to send at the end of the day uh, the president himself has actually gone ahead to put out a comment and uh, you know congratulate a delicate for winning the election. What do you make of this scenario where the governor, the incumbent governor, is yet to put up a call, but he's talking about uh, studying the outcome of the elections or the result? First, uh, the governor is being <laughs> by see, this see, see. overwhelming victory. So I think he's yet to recover from that shock. Oh, okay. And don't also forget that the governor is also a slave to a structure. That structure, I'm talking of his political family. And there are a lot of persons who are not willing to submit to victory. Rather than submit to victory, they will stop at nothing to truncate the process or at, at some point, you know, see if they can uh, how will I put it? Uh, change, change, whatever it is. I can tell you right now that you have those legal mongers, what I call legal financial mongers, those that will now be advising him to go to court. You remember in 2018 what happened? 
and if we got it at the Supreme Court, um, at the uh, social pulling unit, they said there was a gunshot. At this place, votes were avoided. Those voided votes, ordinary would have been your votes. The whole thing was orchestrated for you to lose. The whole essence is just to get more money from the governor. Knowing too well that it's going to be an exercise in futility. I'm not prejudging anyway, because when you look at the margin, I don't know how a court will, whichever way, obtain that victory. They tried it and succeeded in Imo State. The world is aware that Emeka Ehudia was the winner of that very election. How the court manufactured the figures they gave to uh, Uzodema till tomorrow we are yet to see. But the Supreme Court spoke. And of course, you can only appeal to God. And that was why that judgment, that is why that judgment is standing. However, more 19% of Nigerians impugn this sagacity and also believe that we do respect the justice we are fully compromised in the Emeka Yodhara's case. I pray and also hope that the justices will not be fully compromised in this particular matter because it's going to be a prescription for anarchy. This man won and won squarely. If Oyedodela wants to study and wants to go back to the university to study election results up to PhD level, that is his own cup of tea. Nobody is going to question that. If he has a team of lawyers that believe that they can, they have a, the matter is justiciable, they can go to court. No problem. It is also their constitutional right. But I will say it here and now that Nigerians and the world at large have adjusted that election free, fair, credible, and transparent. Therefore, we don't expect the court to subvert the will of our own people. We will not accept that. Adelike has won. Oyotadala should go ahead to study. He can write his thesis on that. He can be a professor of studying of election results. There is no problem. But that election will stand, and that is what it is. All right, uh, let's move away from election issues now. And another one that's quite interesting, you have that on the leadership newspaper and also on the nation. It talks of uh, the unveiling of NNPC as an entity. The president will be you know, doing that in no time. And now, uh, according to the acts, you, know, you have an act from 2021. That's the PI, uh, you know, the P&I Industry Act of 2021. Uh, where you have the PIA. PIA, thank you. Where you have the, uh, uh, you know, the NMPC should be a new entity. But um, looking at this entire act and, you know, the fact that the president will unveil this in the midst of, you know, the fuel crisis and situation, uh, what do you make of this? Is this really good news for Nigerians? Does this mean that, uh, you know, the issue of our fuel? And petrol issues would become issue of you know the history now it will be in the past. You know, one man that has always believed that we have the British government always floundering in a morass of policies. This is a clear case of morass of leadership vacuity. There is no problem in unbundling. I mean, if it's going to ensure efficacy that is going to give us the desired results, the whole essence is um, encourage competition in the market. And we all know the advantages of competition. It will definitely lead to reduction in price. It will also lead to an increase in quality, enhancement in quality. These are the beauties of competition. But you see, a lot of us are worried. First and foremost, the federal government didn't need to do all this for us to have fuel and for, and for the refineries to work. But because the federal government, I mean, federal government, I'm not talking about Buhari's government now. But because the federal government is complicit 
in ensuring that our refineries are moribund so that they are cabals to go ahead with this importation uh, of fuel. They allow that refinery to go moribund is comatose. Yet every day we spend, or every four, four years or two, three years, we spend billions of dollars in quote for turnaround maintenance. And don't forget that we also pay with workers, those who work, they pay, they have paid exorbitant fees, amount, in terms of salary and remuneration. So you see a government that is rudderless, the refinery is not working, yet you are retaining the staff and you are paying them salary. But back to your question, the truth about it is that we are not bothered with the opening of the refinery. There is no problem with that. Even though, like I said, you cannot justify it because prudent management will still have, the government will can still run that refinery, make profit, and the prices of petrol will drop. If we are prudent, if we are sincere, if there is transparency, if there is credibility, but all those things are lacking. Okay, now you want to abandon. Fine. The issue will be will the refineries be cornered by this same, this same cabal involved in uh, ensuring the refineries are comatose so that they can export our crude ridiculously and import them to make abnormal profits? If it's going to, because you see, if, no matter how you unbundle, I don't have the financial capacity to invest. Mercy, you don't have that financial capacity to invest. Just the same cabal that has been making it impossible for the refineries to work, the same cabal that has been making it impossible for us to sell for fuel to be sold at 100 naira per liter, that same cabal will be the ones to buy the refineries and invest in this environment. They will be the ones to invest. And what will be the change? What will be the difference? And this is the last resource. They also know. Look at NEPA, for example, now. Look at NEPA. The situation is worse now. The, 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 the Nigerians are just being ripped up on daily basis. The situation is worse. The same thing will happen. Because there is no sincerity, there is no credibility. And you have a president who said he's tired. Just last week in the right, he said he's tired. He cannot wait to go. So that's why I say you are talking of leadership vacuity. They don't, the Nigerians don't really understand what to do. Every policy is aimed at satisfying a microscopic few. That is the truth in this country. And that is why we are where we are today. Right. So if you are bundled, no problem. You have seen the pictures on your telly and the pages of the paper. Beautiful, good aesthetic work and so on. You say the sun will shine. The sun has always shone on Nigeria. Always. But the problem is that as the God is allowing the sun to shine, Nigerians are building artificial shades mm. to prevent its illumination. And that is why we are in Nigeria in perpetual darkness. God is saying, go and shine. Our leaders are saying, God forbid, they have the shades to prevent illumination. And that is why we are where we are. Let us see if this sun will shine. I doubt it. It will not shine. Not under this administration, at least. Not under this administration. But uh, some people say that, you know, it's within the powers, that the people do have the power to ensure that the sun, the sun actually shines. Uh, and that is what, that is that power that was exercised, that is the power that was exercised in Osho, and the power that will be exercised next year. Uh, that is it, yeah. All right. That, 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 that's the let, let's and get. Those who also have the past, those who also have the past to make it shine immediately are cowards. I'm talking of the National Assembly. Okay. That's right. the only ones that can affect the change. Those ones are compromised cowards. So we don't have a choice but to wait till 2023. Also, has done its own. Nigerians will do their own. 2023. Mm. Mm. Okay, it's good to say, uh, I mean, you have mentioned that uh, members of the National Assembly do not have the guts, they don't have what it takes, you know, 
to ensure that yeah, like, you know, what, did I, what did I love but, about you is uh, your choice of words. You try not to be as harsh as the <laughs> boy is. Good, yes, they don't have the God, right? They don't have the God. All right, then. Uh, well, but let's cook. The, the so uh, <laughs> let's look at the Punch newspaper this morning. Marketers finally hiked petrol price to 170 naira to 190 naira per liter. That's what um, that's our current reality. Uh, what do you make of this? I mean, how will Nigerians actually? Um, you know, survive this particular process, especially when we understand how the economy is dwindling. You know, the purchasing power has also yeah, reduced. You see, you see, you see. Uh, the economic atmosphere is exceedingly inflammatory. If I ask you, Messi, a sincere question, and I try to get a sincere answer from you, how have you been surviving? You don't have you don't have an answer to that question. <laughs> you will tell me now, God, do because one minute you don't have a cup on you, the next minute you're able to solve one or two problems, and that is how you've been going on. Unlike a civilized client, where you have your salary and you can plan with that salary. In Nigeria, yeah, how do you plan with your salary? When in the morning they give you maybe let's say your salary is five hundred thousand. In the morning, a liter of petrol is 160, and in the afternoon is 190. In the evening, is 220. How do you plan? And it has domino effect because the market woman too, the uh, 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 hotel at the same place, the uh, medical doctor at the same thing because they all go to the same market. So domino effect. So when you say how of Nigeria, it's inexplicable. It is better experience. I don't think even the best economists can come up to tell you this. They will tell you one thing, negative impact. That's all. But I think even the economists um, find, uh, can, cannot explain the Nigeria is so peculiar. So are there we... is hunger in the land. It is palpable and pervasive. hunger in the land. There is bewildering frustration and corroding bitterness in the land. We are in one big, how would I call it, valley of despair. Nigerians are despondent. There is no hope, as you speak right now. So it is a question of, oh, oh, oh uh, to attend to Israel, God for us all. That is the situation we find ourselves in this country. Bleak, gloomy, grief. You get up in the morning, you face the challenges you see. You cannot plan to say, oh, tomorrow is there electricity to start it. You can't even get up to say, tomorrow I'll have to go to uh, the shop to get my groceries. I have a hundred thousand naira. By the time you go there, you find out that the hundred thousand naira is just for fuel. I listened to a friend who said he went to buy petrol last week. And it was supposed to go for 165 in Abuja. And when he got there, he said, fill my time. They filled his time. He was calculating 165. At the end of the day, he paid 200 naira per liter. And they, when they filled, he said, how? They said, no, look at it. It's now 200 per liter. How do you plan? That so, is how frustrating the situation is. So are we, likely to see, are we likely to see an increase in crime and criminality? Oh, these are concomitant effects. These are concomitant effects. Because, you see, I said bewildering for such an economic bitterness. Do you know how it feels when you get up in the morning messy? And you turn and look at your son, telling you, Mommy, I'm hungry. As that one is saying, Mommy, I'm hungry, the next one is, is saying, Mommy, I'm having temperature, I'm having fever. Then the third one tells you, Mommy, say, I can't go to school today because I have not paid my school fees. What will you do? Let's face it. Let's face it. Nobody is trying to justify crime. But what do you do? When a man is put to the wall, he bounces back with the double devil. Especially when it has to do with the one that is dying, that is sick. What do you do? You 
resolve do verão das filhas do Sérgio Só. Tá dizendo que tudo está Isso é uma empresa. Isso é uma nature. There is nothing you can do about it. So why are you doing this? And what will this lead to? Because even the country itself has told you. They say, uh, uh, like America should tell you, think of what you can do for America, the famous uh, uh, leader of America. Think of what you can do and not what America can do for you. Then the Nigerian will now also get to the Nigerian and say, what can you do for the country? What has the country ever done for me? When the Americans say, think of what you can do for America and not that America can do, it's like a father who has finished training his son. And he, he has discharged his obligations. And he's now telling his son, I've done my bit. Now you make me proud. It's like taking care of a father in his old age. You have done nothing for Nigerians. You've rather wrecked Nigerians. You've destroyed the country. You've rendered them, you pauperized them. And you say Nigeria should think of what it can do for a country that is not responsible. Leadership that has, is, oh my God, my dear, <laughs> in terms of crime. Let's move away from that. Uh, to increase in crime and criminality. We, we, we can feel... That is the truth about it. I mean, I can actually feel you your heart here. The victims, unfortunately, the victims are going to be those at the bottom of the pecking order. Because when the rich and the mighty steal, they do nothing to them. They steal with impunity. Open up on Katara quickly. So when the farmer steals, steals foul, that foul, you go in for five years imprisonment. Well, I, I can feel your pulse on this one. I mean, we, we can feel how you're always very passionate about this issue. And we can really feel your heart. But we just hope that it would be the same thing with our leaders. I mean, we wish they felt this way, the way you're feeling right now. And it would swing them into action. Uh, the burden that and the pain of the people. But of quick conscience. one, because we have uh, just a few minutes before we call it a wrap here on Off the Press. And let's look at the fact that ASU, uh, following the ASU strike that has lingered for a very long time, uh, this is on the punch, the NLC plans a national protest and the police is asking for notification. The NLC is saying they're embarking on the uh, protest. Uh, maybe this would also help them force the hands of the government to implement the agreement they had entered with the union uh, in the previous years. Do you see this yielding any kind of result? I see Positively. by listening to you today, so irritating, always mounting past relevance and sentimental stability. You see, why would why would I address these issues? If you observe, if you if you on Facebook in the last two weeks, we saw children of governors and ministers and so on graduating abroad. So you tell me, why would they be concerned about ASU? That's why I say it's about the poor man. In case there's no worry, maybe all these kids are, are done with school. He has only taste to send them abroad. So he comes on air to all kinds of uh, nonsense. Sorry to, 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 to you say, use that. Please. But that is the truth about it. You see, there is no sincerity in addressing the actual matter. The government is ready to spend $1 billion dollars or to give a neighboring country one billion dollars than to spend 500 million addressing the actual matter. Why? The president is not bothered. The ministers are not bothered. The governors are not bothered. They have what it is. They can buy universities. Most of them can open their own universities. And so to hell with the common man's children. That is what is going on. As long as what we are going to do, we are going to employ the Fabian policy. And what is that policy? Or pretend to be negotiating. After all, we are not going to suffer for it. If they want to go and strike for one million years, no problem. Well, it's not affecting the kids. They pay their students' school fees in dollars and in pounds. Open up on Qatar. I hope the that we're able to talk about on, this some of on the time. health, tourism, and holidays. If they use that money prudently, they can. I mean, why would a minister use a uh, seven convoy? What is he doing with seven convoy? Cars in his convoy. What is he doing with seven cars in his convoy? 
Right. What does he do with it? You see, it's all about prudent management and it's all about scale of preference, opportunity cost. Okay, now, but... You have leaders who are there, yes? Well, we have to go now. Oh, okay. It's all right. Thank you so much. It's always a delight to listen to a you. Pleasure. I mean, share your thoughts on these issues. A pleasure. And uh, a pleasure. we hope that someday Nigeria would be a better place. And I'm hoping that we will be alive to witness all of that. Thank you so much for being part of the I practice. I pray so. I pray so. Thank you. As always, uh, very passionately listening to uh, open up one Katara, share his thoughts on these issues and and you know the, the question would always be what exactly is the problem you know, are these things so impossible is it so difficult is it like going to the moon even going to the moon it's it's been possible these days well that's the size of uh, of the press this morning when we return we'll be heading straight to our first major conversation, looking at the Oshun elections, the preparation, the turnout, and the victory. Stay with us, we'll be right back.